Five years ago, Howard G. Buffett was at a meeting of an international food aid agency when he was told that feeding the millions of starving people in Africa was simple. Just give them better seeds, someone said. That advice might work on some philanthropists, but Buffett, son of billionaire Warren Buffett, happens to be an Illinois farmer. This guy was explaining to me how to farm and he'd never been on a farm in his life, he said, so it really kind of irritated me. I came home and said, okay, I'm gonna have data to show these guys. So Howard Buffett, a blunt pragmatist, built farming into a well-endowed foundation giving away tens of millions annually to global hunger causes while keeping it geeky with hands-on research into soils, irrigation, and seed signs. The research is taking shape at his 1,400-acre farm in southeastern Arizona, where the climate mimics that of Africa, on plots at his 3,200-acre home place in Illinois and at another 9,200-acre farm in South Africa. Backing up the dollars with data has helped Buffett establish a humanitarian program that teaches African farmers how to be resilient, he said, which is the key to feeding the estimated 870 million people in the world who don't have enough to eat. Instead of a green revolution for Africa, Buffett favors what he calls a brown revolution, or to quote the distinguished agricultural ecologist Sir Gordon Conway, a doubly green revolution, a focus on environmentally sustainable agriculture that minimizes erosion, preserves and regenerates soil, and makes the land more resilient, while also increasing yields. In contrast to the green revolution, the brown revolution is a tortoise-like approach. Its impact is gradual. Over the past decade, patiently, the Howard G. Buffett Foundation has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to identify and promote practical, low-cost methods of conservation farming, cover crops, no-till farming, locally bred seed varieties that improve African soil quality and crop yields without chemical fertilizers and costly imported seeds. If you take a place like Africa, Buffett told me, where they have the most degraded soils in the world, very limited nutrients, Ground that is farmed to death, literally to the point where you have to move on and farm another piece of ground, and all you're doing is throwing on synthetic fertilizer. It's like trying to put an oxygen mask on a cadaver and expecting it's gonna start breathing again. Howard Buffett was already in his 30s when he decided to become a farmer. He had dropped out of college, in fact, he had dropped out of three colleges. I was gonna be a lawyer. I was going to law school, I had everything planned, and then I got to college and realized life didn't work that way, he said. I had a lot of energy, and I didn't know where to direct it. I couldn't figure out what to do, and so I tried some different things, at least I never ended up in jail. For a few years, Buffett worked as an excavator in Omaha, digging basements. Briefly, he helped cultivate cornfields in Nebraska. He was employed for a time as a packing clerk by Seas Candies, one of the many companies owned by Berkshire Hathaway. He worked for a construction company. He ran for public office in Nebraska, serving on the Douglas County Board of Commissioners for four years. Eventually, however, it became clear to him that he was happiest working the land. Farming was his true vocation. It reassured and recalibrated him. Married with four stepdaughters to support and a son on the way, Buffett wanted to buy a farm, but he had no capital. In 1986, when Buffett was 31, his father bought 400 acres of farmland north of Omaha for $280,000, then rented it to his son at a rate of 5% a year, plus a percentage of the farm's gross receipts, either 22% or 26% depending on whether Howard's weight exceeded 182.5 pounds, he weighed about 200 pounds when his father acquired the land. I don't mind it really, he told a reporter at that time, he's showing he's concerned about my health. But what I do mind is that even at 22%, he 
he's getting a bigger paycheck than almost anybody around. This seemed like a natural role for a guy who grew up in Omaha, playing in the dirt and loving Tonka trucks, but certainly not as likely for the oldest son of one of the world's richest men. Buffett, 58, started farming in his home state of Nebraska in the early 1980s, his famously frugal father charging him rent and graduated from bulldozers to 400 horsepower tractors, he moved to central Illinois to work at ADM Co., the huge food processing conglomerate, and established his corn and soybean operation near Decatur. His interest in Africa began as a wildlife photographer, but he soon realized that the first step to protecting the country's animals and environment was to combat its rampant food shortages. He combined his passion for agriculture with a sense of charitable giving he and his father have attributed to his late mother, Susan Buffett. The Buffets gave their three children the wherewithal to be charitable, through what Warren Buffett calls the ovarian lottery. In addition to the millions Susan Buffett left to them when she died in 2004, Warren Buffett announced in 2006 that he would give a fraction of his fortune to his kids. But when the fortune is worth $40 billion, that slice still adds up to $2 billion to each of their foundations. Howard Buffett tells a story in his soon-to-be-released book, 40 Chances, Finding Hope in a Hungry World. The title references an aha moment Buffett says he had in a farm equipment store, Assumption, Ill, a tiny town south of Decatur. One winter day in 2001, Buffett attended a planting workshop and heard the speaker question what many consider the predictability of farming. Each season, a farmer has a chance to improve, to learn from mistakes, and if he's lucky, he'll have 40 seasons to perfect this process, the speaker said. If I have 40 years or 40 chances to try to figure some of these things out, every year knocks one off. You better have a sense of urgency, and you can screw around, Buffett said. You can look and say, oh well, we'll do it next year. Buffett is also working to help fight hunger closer to home. He has established a national program called Invest in Acre, which encourages farmers to donate an acre or more of crop profits to help feed people in their communities. Buffett's donations have allowed the Central Illinois Food Bank to move to a larger facility with better storage, said Callie Friend, a spokeswoman. Each summer, Buffett also donates several thousand pounds of sweet corn from his farm, which Friend says helps feed the one in four children in the area who have problems getting enough to eat. Things like Invest in Acre and people who have community gardens or farmland where they donate some fresh produce, that's what really makes the difference in the long run here in central Illinois, she said. Buffett's book, 40 Chances, will be published in October. That same month, he'll be with former British Prime Minister Tony Blair at the World Food Prize Ceremony in Des Moines. Those appearances will eat into harvest time, of course. The farmer philanthropist, who planted late like many in the Midwest because of a wet spring, could still be up in his combine. If Buffett started out zigzagging through life, to quote his father, he has since made up for lost time. From modest beginnings, his commercial farming operation now encompasses 1,900 acres in Nebraska and Illinois, with gross receipts of about $1 million. He's on Coca-Cola's board and has been chosen by his father to serve as the next non-executive chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, not to make investments but to uphold the company's culture. In 2013, he wrote a best-selling book, 40 Chances, Finding Hope in a Hungry World. By all accounts, the task of responsibly giving away huge amounts of money has given his life urgency. His father's gift caused him to focus more, he told me, and to believe that by doing so, he could maybe have some impact. Buffett's campaign to end global hunger came by way of his work as a conservationist and a wildlife photographer. In his early years as a philanthropist, 
he established a 6,000-acre cheetah reserve in South Africa. He supported the International Gorilla Conservation Program. He spent a great deal of time and money fighting poachers in the Democratic Republic of the Congo's Virunga National Park. He published glossy compendiums of his wildlife photographs. Before long, however, it occurred to him that the best way to protect Africa's wildlife was to improve the livelihoods of its people. From a distance, it was easy to blame greedy poachers and corrupt government officers for the decimation of important ecosystems, he wrote in 40 Chances, but I also saw that the people who shared these ecosystems with the endangered species were endangered themselves. Many were starving. I realized I had to shift my efforts to a more fundamental issue. Since then, Buffett has visited 142 countries, including 54, all in Africa, to gain a first-hand understanding of poverty. He spends up to 200 days a year on the road. He's been held up more than once at gunpoint. He's been threatened, arrested, and detained. He's met an African warlord. As a result of an encounter with an agitated cheetah, his right forearm is scarred.